Hey guys, so today we are going to see how to draw a box with a hole inside and which is a question from Katik who is one of my students of Sketch Like The Pros. So I do invite you to see on the designsketchbook.com some further tutorials about design sketching. Okay, so now when we get started is a doodle time, which means that we are going to draw whatever uh, strategy we are going to take with some small doodles. So how to draw a box with a hole? Basically, it would be a box first in perspective with a cylinder inside. The hole will be fully drawn because we want to see in transparency. This is what is going to help you to draw in three dimensions. Okay, so, but then how we're going to get this first is to go back to 2D. It's basically from top view, the top surface, circle inside the square. But then how to draw that circle inside the square, making sure that it's pretty nice inside. And what we are going to do here is that we are going to use some simple geometry rules. Okay, so make sure that to go through all this doodle time because it will help you to organize your strategy of sketching. So we start with a square, you draw the diagonals, okay? So let's duplicate it so we can get the next step here. So you can see like uh, the different steps side by side. And then you decide on the width of the square here. That's it, by drawing, making sure that all the horizontal, horizontal, and vertical are vertical. Okay, and so you will get by default a perfect square inside. And that perfect square here, we want to draw a circle inside. So we will draw a vertical here, going through the center and the horizontal as well. And then you can see these four extra dots. These four extra dots are going to be the place where the circle is going to touch it. It's going to be the touching point of the circle into that small square. All right, so you know that this circle is actually following in the middle at the center of this, of this box, this future box, okay? So step one, two, three, four, five. All right, so just follow this step by step, step by step, and it's pretty easy. Okay, now our challenge is going to draw all this, but in perspective, okay? So it's going to be the perspective time. <laughs> so, and with that, what we are going to do is to draw a two-point pers two perspective setup right here. And if you want to get more information really step by step on the, this perspective setup, I do invite you to go on the blog and download the free book about this. I do have a guide which is going to explain you all the things step by step. All right, so we have the main line in front, we join to the vanishing point, we decide of uh, the width of your box here, and so you can constitute your box in perspective right here. Okay? Here we go, we have our cube. So once again, download the designer starter kit on the website. This is where you will get all the info. So now we are going to apply what we have seen in 2D in 3D. We are drawing the diagonals, remember? The step two. And then we are going to choose uh, the width because now we are wondering, hey, how is going to be, how big is going to be that, that circle inside, that cylinder which is going to be in the middle of this box. Okay, so you decide, you, you spot one of the dots here on the on this uh, one of these diagonals and then you join it to the vanishing point and from there this extra line you got here just join it to the opposite side here we go until it touch the other side of the diagonals see and by magic these two extra lines are going to be connected <laughs> so it's just like a game if you do everything well it's just like a game you can use a ruler if you want to train a start but uh, ultimately, um, the freehand would be best. So as you can see here, the short distance and long distance, this is why it's called foreshortening. It's totally normal thing, and this is what you need with practice to, to get used to it. All right, so let's carry on here. We got our uh, square in perspective, and what we want is to draw our circle, which is going to be an ellipse inside. So we are looking for these four extra dots. See, I just connected uh, the centers to the vanishing points that's it I got the axis which is vertical and I draw here the symmetry ellipse I do have uh, an extra tutorial which is specific specifically specifically about ceiling, uh, circles into uh, a square surface and I'm going to give you the link in the description here below okay so now what we do is to repeat these operations on the bottom surface of that box so we are wondering like uh, with the width on that circles below so you just need to project 
uh, two corners of that top box, of that top corner of the square, to the bottom. From diagonal to diagonal, from top diagonals to below diagonals, and then you can reconstitute the rest. Already we got this. So feel free to pause, to rewind a bit if you want to, uh, to go and see it step by step. But if you follow the logics, actually you will be able to reconstitute, to reconstitute it by yourself as well, because that's following exactly the same steps. Alrighty, and now what we are going to do, uh, we got this cylinder, we got this box, how to represent that, uh, that hole, that this is, that there is nothing inside. So what you do is to add some contour lines. So here we go. As you can see here, it's going inside that cylinder with that contour lines here. And this is how you can represent visually in very fast in product design uh, the whole like there is missing so missing material inside okay so the contour lines is representing on the on the materials and that's giving you the different volume of it this is what I like in product design is really like with some simple lines it can actually mean a lot then you can add some hatching if you want to inside to show uh, um, an even better contrast within the internal surface and what is happening outside. Okay, so uh, to go further, as you can see here, if you don't want to have a hole, like you can see a groove around the, the ellipses, you can just draw some small grooves inside, uh, just at the corner uh, touching point of the circle. Okay. So as you can see, really the contour lines is what can express whether there is a hole or whether there is a cap on top of it. That's it. Mm -mm -mm. So now let's practice a bit more. So if you want to remember all the steps, I do invite you to repeat the operations in a smaller scale. Like a very really small one like this one, very fast, and you go ahead. Now what we are going to do is to draw the circle in front here, not on the top, and that will be exactly the same steps. Here we go. Make sure that your ellipse is well symmetrical and in taking the minor axis, which is this arrow uh, coming from the left vanishing point. <laughs> and yeah, as, as a reference, do the same on the back surface and then you can just connect these two uh, ellipses and that you will get that cylinder or hole inside that box okay so as you can see it's all about strategy and if you know perspective you know that simple geometry rules uh, of this little strategy and then you can draw in any angle now we are going to draw the box with a tilted perspective and it's super easy you just need to draw a slanted uh, horizon line, making sure that all your verticals are actually at 90 degrees of the horizon line. Let's say you just need to turn your paper basically <laughs> and carry on. It's super simple. Now let's draw a box which is above the horizon line. See, it's just like some uh, practice and exercises, like whatever, like is below, bottom, uh, on the left or right. At any angle, you can already draw this box. And you're just following the same logic. This is why it's super magic, is that you don't have to have a visual memory, which is super intense, but having uh, just a sense of strategy. Remember the principles, and then everything will be fine. You will be able to draw a lot of stuff. And now it's time of freehand time, when you uh, got acquire all these things, and the relationship of the distance, the foreshortening, and all that. Uh, it's time to freehand very fast and see how it looks. You don't have to be perfect, but this is what is going to be great, is that if you have well uh, integrated all, the, all this data, your freehand sketches uh, will look cool. That's it here. Here we go. <laughs> And so that's it for these small tutorials here. Oh, do remember that, uh, as you can see, I draw super light. It's just to make sure that your construction line are super light so you can go and bold along the way. All right, so see you on the next tutorial. Bye-bye.